Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome. In this episode, we're going to be talking about hash tables and hash sets. This is the hands-on part, so if you need that theoretical garbage and stuff, check out the previous video. Now we're just going to go through some examples. And pretty much any language you work with is going to have some class to represent a hash table and probably a class to represent a set. Inside of Python, the hash table is known as a dictionary and the hash set is known as just a set. So we're primarily going to focus on the dictionary first and then take a look at sets, but let's get some foundational knowledge up front. So let's talk about how to create a dictionary in a set. So we'll just call it data and use curly braces, and that's how you create a dictionary. And the way you would check this, what type it is in Python, I'm just going to print an output and say type of data. So that'll get the type of the variable, and you can see it's of the class dict. Now when you're creating sets, you also use curly braces. So I'm going to create a set, let's just call it colors, and I'm going to pass in something like red, and I'm going to go back here and change what I'm checking here to colors. So let's see what the type of this is, and you can see it's of type set. Now here's a quick tip or a gotcha, a red flag. If you're thinking I'm just going to make an empty set and you get rid of that element, well, that actually becomes a dictionary because that's the exact syntax to create an empty dictionary. So at least in Python, there is no empty set literal. And to do this equivalent thing, you would actually say set like so. So now it's still a set, but there's no elements in it. Just a little red flag for you guys before we get too deep into this. So let's work with the dictionary first, and then we'll go back and take a look at sets. We can put any data we want in here and you just separate the key and the value with a colon. The key can be anything that is hashable. So as an example, let's go with names, Caleb, and then this is going to be associated to some email, such as email at email.com. And let's add a couple other values in here. All right, so we got two values. Let's add a third one in here. This one's gonna be John, and his email is going to be j at email.com. All right, so we got three key value pairs. And to see what this looks like anytime, you can just print that dictionary and that will put it out in the terminal to see how it's represented. So it looks pretty good, no syntax errors, everything ran fine. Now I did wanna call out something interesting and that is the order of this data is exactly the same as how we inserted it. Now just for consistency, I'm going to capitalize these names, but really doesn't matter. But there is one thing I wanted to call out, and that is the order of the data when we print it out is exactly the same as when we put it in the dictionary at the beginning. Now generally, when you think of hash tables, I want you to think of them as unordered. That's because they use the key, it goes through a hashing function, and that is used to determine where it is positioned. So you can't trust the position of the data to be maintained. However, in Python, the dictionary actually maintains the order that the data was inserted. So it just so happens that it maintains the order that we inserted that data, but that is not a standard thing for hash tables. If you 100% need to maintain that order, I wouldn't recommend using a dictionary. Rather, inside of Python, you can import another type of dictionary called an ordered dictionary. So to do that, you would say from collections import ordered dict and then you can create an ordered dict by just saying something like ordered dict and then you can work with this dictionary here so that is the proper tool if you need to maintain order and it is 100 percent essential another thing with dictionaries is whether or not you can have duplicate elements so why don't we give it a try let's copy the string to make sure we get it exactly the same and we'll just paste that in here and run this. And the actual data stays exactly the same. Caleb is only in here one time. And if you wanna think about how this works, it takes this key, Caleb, runs it through the hashing function, finds the location it's stored in and realizes that key is already there. So what it does is it, it replaces that data with this data here. So if I went in and changed some of this, and ran it, you can see the only one that is maintained is the second one there. 
So you can probably catch on to two very important attributes of hash tables. One, they are not ordered, and two, there is no duplicate keys. Duplicate values are totally fine as long as the keys are different because Python sees those as two separate entities anyways. So for example, if I said this one was Caleb2, even though they have the exact same email, it's totally fine and they both get put inside of the dictionary. Now to grab a particular element, all you have to do is pass in the key. So for example, we'll pass in Caleb and you can see we get that person's email. So consider this a lookup table. If you need to grab someone's email, all you gotta do is pass their name into data and it'll give it to you. Now I'm gonna give credit where credit is due and call out a very helpful Stack Overflow question. And that is called, how are Python's built-in dictionaries implemented? And here you can see some really good resources that have been pulled together explaining how Python dictionaries are hash tables and a little bit more behind the scenes, what it does for conflict resolution and so forth. An important thing to realize here is that each entry is a combination of three values, the hash, the key, and the value. It's important that that key is in there so it knows which element you're trying to grab. So this guy mentions that the technique for conflict resolution is actually uh, random probing. So in our theory video, I mentioned linear probing. Python actually uses random probing. Also, on occasion, the memory for this dictionary is going to be increased so we can reduce conflicts. And that is done when it is two thirds full, as this guy mentions here, and there is a link. That's gonna cost upfront because there is effort involved in copying the elements to a new dictionary. However, it's going to save us effort over time because it's going to reduce the number of collisions because there's more space. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention with dictionaries is that it's the key part that is hashed. The key here, for example, Caleb or Caleb2 or Alicia or John, that is what gets hashed. And if you wanna see what that might look like, you can say hash and pass in some data, run this and you will get some crazy number here. How it gets that number, I have no idea, but that number is then used to derive a position in memory. Some things cannot be hashed and therefore cannot be used for the keys. So for example, you can't use a list, that's an empty list there. We run this and it says unhashable type list. So when you are creating custom types, let's just create a class real quick. Doesn't really matter what it's called, we're just gonna say test. If this is going to be a mutable type, meaning you're gonna change the data, we can tell this to not be hashable by saying underscore underscore hash underscore underscore is equal to none. And then we can test it by passing an instance of this class to hash and run this and we get an error unhashable type test. If we did not put this in here, by default, our types are going to be hashable. However, this is not recommended if you're going to be changing the data for our objects. So I gotta put pass in here, run this, and you can see it does give us a value based on the memory address of this object. All right, now let's take a look at sets. Let's just clear this crap out and clear that out. And we're just gonna call this data, just like earlier. And I'm just gonna put some colors in here, red, green, and blue. If you go ahead and just test putting some the same data in there, it's not going to be persisted. So when we run print data, we get red, blue, and green, and there's not two blues, and they are in a different order. So the sets in Python do not maintain the insertion order. Now I did mention there are various operations you can do with sets. I have a lot of source code on this up in my GitHub. If you're interested in all the details, you can find that in my Python folder, and then 07 dictionary sets. And the different operations start here. So you can see union uses a pipe. We have the intersection with the ampersand. We got the difference. And then lastly, we have the symmetric difference, which is that carrot looking thingy. So if you want a refresher on how all those work, what you can do is you can go in here, execute this code, or you can watch our theory video, which I just did in the previous episode. And what the heck, I'm just gonna go through this so you guys can see. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it over here and run it. So let's just go through these outputs, make sure we understand everything. Very first thing is we have my favorite colors and her favorite colors. 
if we get the union, we basically combine these two sets, removing any duplicates. So we get all of the different options, black, green, orange, purple, blue, red. If we do an intersection, it's just the ones that are shared between both. So that's how you do that here. And that's going to get blue, green, and purple. And that's how we determine our wedding colors, of course. Next up, we have methods versions. So you can say dot union and pass in another set. That's one way you could do it. But let's talk about the difference and symmetric difference for a second. The difference is going to basically remove any of her favorite colors from mine. That's going to leave us with just black and red. We could do it the other way around and get rid of any of the colors I like from hers. And in that situation, we're going to be left with just orange. If we were to combine both of these sets, that is known as the symmetric difference. And you can do it shortcut by doing it like so. But it's pretty much just going to give us the combination black, red, and orange, which you can see right here. And then I just show you the other way of doing it where you take one difference and you union it with the other difference and that's going to get you the same result. So that is your introduction to dictionaries and sets in Python. Hopefully this was a good data structures oriented way of teaching the subject rather than just going through code samples. So hopefully you have a better understanding of hash tables, sets, and hash functions, and all kinds of good juicy stuff. If you enjoy this content, please be sure to subscribe. And if you need more Python practice, I got a whole series on it on my channel, so check it out.